Good day everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are making an 1820s silk bonnet. Alright, let's get cutting. So I'm using Timely Tresses Sophia. And I never thought I'd be making an 1820s bonnet. I thought I was going to stop at 1830s, but here we are in 1820s at an event. So, let's get cutting. I'm choosing the uh, tapered crown and brim style one. I feel you wouldn't um, fold your buckram, so I am going to have to work on this a little bit. steam it straight. And I'll do that with all these pieces and then sew them together to make a frame. All right, first step is first, binding all the edges. This is just a, um, I guess it's a, a cotton crinoline, but it's kind of a bias and it's kind of thin and anyway, I use it to go over the edges so I don't have any raw buckram edges. together the bits of the bonnet. So I have the back part sewn together, working on getting this brim put in. Afterwards we'll wire it. It's kind of a little dark in here to do so, so we might wire it tomorrow. and trim. That's all we got left. Alright, wiring. So this is just millinery wire and put it to the edge. Whipping it on. Alright, sewing together this um, covering the bonnet, I suppose. So I have all the pieces on there. I just haven't sewn this one down except for at the very edges. Um, those are kind of tacked down right now. But the tip part or the top part is done and I'm just whipping together this side crown bit. I am, I have it lined now and I'm tagging down this facing part, at least within the uh, top bit. I'm just whipping it to the lining. So I gotta bind all these edges next. And it looks like from the directions we're not adding a curtain. I see in the 30s that you have this optional curtain that um, could be ribbon, it could be the silk, it, it also could be the buckram or straw. But it doesn't look like we have that in the 20s yet. Which I'm okay with because that's what's worked. If I have a two inch wide bias for this uh, binding, I'm gonna bind the whole thing even like down here. And that should be the last of the raw edges. Everything else should be covered by now. All right, last little step of the um, form bit, which is putting on the facing or um, binding. Which it looks really nice, I think, on the, even on the outside. There's some rippling here, but that's just with such a sharp angle, it's hard to avoid that. And with that, we're on trimmings. I think I'm gonna go simple for this bonnet. May do feathers? I didn't think so, but I have some lovely pomegranate silk ribbon that's gonna trim it. Alright, we are trimming out a bonnet. So, I have an original 
a picture of original that I'm kind of going off of. So it kind of showed a big bow on the very back and then that ribbon came across and that was where the ties. And so that's what I'm doing here. Oh, that was the wrong end of the needle. That went into my finger. That hurt. Okay. Fun. Just making sure I'm not going to bleed. Pretty sure this product already has my blood on it. It's just, I don't want it anywhere very visible. I meant to find my red thread too and I couldn't. So we're using gray and just taking tiny, tiny little stitches. And hopefully it will be seen. That's the goal here. Okay. Now the original had a, I think it was a straw ribbon that went kind of around. I don't have straw ribbons. I have extra of this. So let's just stick this here. Um, let's see. I think bows are usually on the left side. I could be making that up in my head, but I, I, I think. Kitty in my lap. Okay. Um, let's see. It's definitely not even. I don't like it to take it off, so it's not like I'm really losing anything here. Just move all this around. Kind of nice and even. face this direction. Just gonna mess with it some more. I think I like that. Um, just kind of mess with it a little bit to make it look better. I definitely want it facing down. There we go. Okay, let's try that. So we have the bonnet. I hope you can see the bonnet. We're gonna have to put the camera down a little bit more or up a little bit. We're gonna have to put it up a little bit more. All right, hopefully this will work. Bonnet, I'm in my 1820s wrapper, which I don't think has debuted yet, but I have an 1820s wrapper. And my 1820s hair is not put up correctly. It is tied with a scrunchie on top of my head and I put in my curls and covered it with a cap. So this is a quick and dirty two second 1830s hairstyle, 1820s hairstyle. Let's try it with a bonnet. I have put a veil on it because I have used the bonnet. <laughs> I love veils. I love it when they get all tangled up in the ties, but... There we go. But yeah, I'm wearing a wrapper, not a dress. But I do feel like getting into my 1820s corsets it takes forever to do so when I'm by myself. And that's what we're dealing with right now. So I put on my wraparound corset and put on a wrapper. So that's why I'm wearing not a dress. But the bonnet still looks really nice. Here's the side and the back. Now this side, of course, is covered with a veil, which Probably easier to see the back and the sides when the veil is up front. One thing I really like about 1820s and 1830s bonnets in regards to veiling is like the 60s, you know, of course the bonnets sit like a little bit further back on your head and so the veiling is like right up against your face, which is fine. I don't ever feel claustrophobic, but I like how the 1820s and 30s, the bonnets hold the veil away from the face. I actually really prefer that. But yeah, this is um, just vintage, I know it does, uh, netting, cotton netting, and it has the pattern all over it, and 
made it quite long. It goes nearly to my knees, which is probably a little earlier than 20s, but it works still for 20s. But yeah, feeling is awesome. Not for, not for morning, just for the sunglasses of the 1820s. And when I don't feel like wearing it, in the 1820s, you see mostly it just thrown to one side. By the 1830s, we're starting to see a mix of throwing to one side and also tossed back like that. The graceful disarray of a veil. Hi, kitty. Uh, which is what you see, like, really from the 1830s on up through the 1860s, which is really all I study, so I don't know if it continues after that, but we do see the graceful disarray. But that is essentially the bonnet. Beautiful coloring. I mean, it goes with most of my dresses. There's one dress that does not go with well. Unfortunately, it's my favorite 1820s dress. And all that means is I need a second 1820s bonnet. Which I have the stuff for. That'll be next on the project. 1820s project list. Um, but this one looks really good with my green wool dress. Which I would have worn for the video to kind of show you how well it contrasts. However, that is a back clothing dress and I cannot get into it on my own. So... <laughs> That didn't happen, but this still works. And like, I would never wear the wrapper, put this to the side. I would never wear the wrapper like out. That's not an out, out. It's not like an outing outfit. It's a uh, stay at home, I'm half dressed, but I need to appear like somewhat decent because there are men around. That's what a wrapper is for. And also for like going out of the house and going to the restroom in the middle of the night where I have to walk like a quarter of a mile to go to the restroom. But um, it's not like a, hang out, go to town, entertain visitors thing yet is the getting dressed. It's a, it's a state of undress. After hours, I still wear it around people. So it's not like I would ever wear the wrapper with the bonnet, but it still looks pretty good. I mean, it's a neutral wrapper, so like anything would look good with it, but I really, really like this color ribbon. It's like one of my favorite colors. Blue and green are my favorite colors. This would be a, a third. This would be the the top three. I just really love this shade. And of course with the gray silk it looks really well. Uh, white cap kind of sets that off a little bit as well. But I think the next bonnet I'm going to make is going to be a straw bonnet. So it's going to be brown and I'm going to trim it with blue. So hopefully it'll go with the red dress because the one that doesn't this doesn't really go with is the bright red dress and it's just kind of odd looking with this and the bright red I think. But I don't think people in the historic time period would have actually cared too much. But with all that being said, thank you so much for joining me as you made our lovely 1820s bonnet. My first foray into 1820s bonnet making and I quite enjoyed it. Um, I really like the time periods of bonnets where I don't have to do trimming on the inside. <laughs> I don't know why. I love trimming on the inside. I think it's gorgeous. I just really prefer not to do it. So trimming on the outside and very little trimming at that. I mean, I could have done much more. I could have done florals. I could have done feathers. Did I do feathers on this one? It's been a while. I don't think so. I think I just did the ribbon. Which works for me. I, I really kind of like my millinery to be simple. Dresses, not so much. Jewelry, not so much. But I like my bonnets to be simple. For the most part. There's been one or two 1850s bonnets I've kind of gone a little overboard with. But um, I was copying the original, so it was okay. But as far as 1820s bonnets go, I really enjoy this one. I look forward to many, many more times of wearing it. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, have a fantastic week and I will see you back here on Monday.